Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Ashkosh Area School District Board of Education regular scheduled meeting. Um, are we in compliance with open meeting laws? We are. Okay, will you please call the roll? Carlin? Here. Eliza? Here. Evans? Here. Garner? Here. Herzog? Here. Olmsted? Here. Heschel? Here. We have a quorum. Great. Tonight we will be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by Addison. start with our student representatives presentations tonight would you like to begin yes okay good all right we have had a lot of events happen in the past month but first to start us off we have our sports update basketball season is still continuing on we're headed off to playoff season the girls basketball team has won three games and lost 16 boys basketball I didn't have the exact um, statistics for it but they have been working hard they've won a, they've won a decent amount of games so they're very excited for playoff season. Um, West Wrestling is sending 10 sectional qualifiers to sectionals this weekend. I believe it's in Slinger. I'm not positive, but we're very excited. It's a decent amount of kids, and we have gymnastics, and they have been working very hard this season as well. And I don't know exactly um, when state is or like when you qualify for state, but they've been winning a lot of their home meets and their dual meets, so it's very exciting to see all their hard work being paid off. Boys swimming and diving had a very exciting sectional meet. We had one state qualifier, Andrew Growth, in the 200 free and the 500 free, and he ended up winning the 200 freestyle, so he automatically qualified for state. It was really exciting to see that. And then this past week was snow blast week, so this let, led into our homecoming too. Throughout, we had um, kind of a weird schedule throughout the week. So during our lunch periods, it was extended so that the snow blast events could occur. There was tug of war, team waistline. So it was like the biggest waist and the smallest waist <laughs> with all your teams combined and your teacher. And then here's another picture from tug of war. And they had like kind of like multiple teams competed against each other. And then this was the final, I can go back, but this is on one side with Mr. Peterson and then this is the other team. So it was very exciting kind of gets dangerous after a while. Mm. <laughs> and then the last thing is our sledding, um, like build your own sled, go down gar garbage hill. And that is very exciting. Each year it's different. This year we actually had snow, so we were able to use real sleds. Last year we didn't have any snow, so it was kind of like putting bikes down the hill instead. But you're not allowed to use like a, leg a, like a legit sled from the store. You have to build your own. So it's really cool to see the different ones. And here's a selfie from Mrs. Cole. This was the team height. So you had to line up with their feet by um, your neck and then the tallest team won. So that was really fun. All right, Oshkosh West Academy for Global Studies was recently given $30,000 in scholarship money to send um, students abroad. We've done it for the past two years now. We've gotten scholarship money. We've, got, uh, we've gotten even more now, so more students are able to attend. It's through the CIEE program. There's multiple different countries there, and each um, country and program that you choose, there's different themes. So there's like a language immersion one, a culture immersion one. We had a girl two years ago go to Africa, and she did a nature one. So it's, they're like, they range di differently, and it was really exciting to see where they are going. My Fair Lady also happened about three weeks ago, and this was with the West Musical. It was really exciting. It was, they had a really good result. The cast was amazing, as always, so yeah. And West sent a couple of students to the End Abuse Wisconsin Team Summit, I believe it was this past weekend, and this was just about, um, they talked about um, how to have like healthy relationships and end like sexual abuse in uh, teens. The parents were welcome and uh, the students were really happy to be there. And then we have our own National Merit Scholar finalist, Carly Coons. We are so proud of her. She works so hard every day and it was really awesome to see that. 
And then our signing day for our Un University of Wisconsin Green Bay Division I soccer. These girls have been teammates for quite some time now, so we are really proud of them as they start their journey together once again at Green Bay. Oshkosh West Academy for Global Studies put on a Valentine's Day dance at North with the Special Education Department. Mm -hmm. And it was really fun to see all the pictures. They, everyone looked like they had such a good time. They were so happy. They just danced and really enjoyed it. And then today, they had the Oshkosh West Academy for Global Studies teamed up with the special, special Education Department again and did the Oshkosh West Winter Olympics 2018 in light of the Winter Olympics occurring. Mm -hmm. And they had um, the uh, national anthem sung by Kit. And Katie Rand, she danced for them. The dance team also performed, and then they performed in different events. So it was really fun to see that. Thank you. Thank That's you. awesome. You can get pictures from the Valentine's Day <laughs> as I cut it. <laughs> All right. Um, we do not have as much going on as Wes, but we still have stuff to update you guys on. Um, so on this episode, um, I'll start off with the musical. It happened this past week, and I. I went to it and I absolutely loved it. It was hilarious. Um, it was about the Adams Family and it was kind of a rendition where um, Wednesday, played by senior um, Kiana Fiedler, um, fell in love with a boy and it kind of tested both families. So it was really funny to watch. Um, continuing on, our community students are currently <coughs> partnering with the Oshkosh PD to reduce um, op opioid abuse. And they also have um, the Eliminate Project, which is a campaign to minimize tetanus in women and children in developing countries. They're having a fundraiser for that, and they're having a spaghetti dinner held at North on February 22nd, so please feel free to come out and support them. And then we have quite a bit going on with our athletics. First, um, with basketball, we have a really big game this Friday. Um, if you'd like to attend, please go to North and pick up a ticket because it'll probably sell out. Um, it's against Kakana and it's the fight for n the number one spot in the FBA. So please come out and watch. Is it at North? Yeah, yep. it's at North. Mm -hmm. um, and then for the girls, we just won a game against Kakana, so we hope to do that again on Friday. And the Spartans will also travel to Appleton North um, to play the Lightning on Friday as well. And then with wrestling, they placed seventh at the FBA tourney in Appleton, and then they finished sixth in Slinger. Um, we also had three wrestlers qualify for sectionals, Thomas Urban, um, Dalton Holmes, and along with sophomore Cage Schmidt, and you can see Thomas pictured to the right. And they will be um, competing for state on the 17th. Mm -hmm. And then our da dance team went to state um, on the third, and they were quite excited about that as well. And this is their second year going to state, so it was quite awesome to see them um, go back to back. Um, swimming, they just finished up their season um, this past weekend. Um, they finished 10th out of 11 teams at Mina this past Saturday. And then they finished fourth at the FEA meet on the third as well. And they finished with a 4-3-1 dual meet record. Um, hockey. The Cope, I'm sorry, the Cope boys hockey team finished their season last night <coughs> in Bayport, losing 9-1, which was kind of sad, but I was talking to one of the seniors, Hunter Poe, and he said it was just an amazing way to finish out a season with all his team, even though they did lose. Um, and the Ice Hawks finished seventh place um, in the Badgerland Hockey Conference and had an overall record of 4-21. Um, upcoming, we have Sash Clash Days this upcoming week, and um, the dance is being run by a Rotary team, so that's something new. And then we have our co band concert coming up, and um, also the Hall of Fame in March. And so we have a lot to look forward to. So stay tuned, and <laughs> see you next month. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't have anything to report, so we'll jump right to the superintendent's report. Well, good evening. Um, this evening's um, superintendent good news report for February 14th is as follows. Um, it, it almost bears waiting as opposed to a um, uh, number of pages, but it, um, it is sizable. <laughs> but uh, uh, we did have a three-week stint here because of um, how late um, the second 
um, Wednesday of the month is. Creative Franklin Elementary School students uh, in Mrs. Dubert's um, class give a presentation about their favorite book uh, using either a paper presentation or a t-shirt presentation. Students talked about the characters and setting uh, problems in the story in which uh, their parts were in what was their favorite parts. Carl Traeger Elementary School students recently had a visit from a motivational speaker, um, Al Fett, Al Ellie Fitt, uh, who provided um, uh, different lessons for grade levels, kindergarten, first um, grade. Uh, students learned uh, that each person is special and unique. Second and third graders learned about uh, filling other um, buckets um, with notes. And fourth and fifth graders learned about happiness and attitude um, as the, they um, are their church their own choices each and every day. Uh, by the way, Allie is, um, is a former principal of Lourdes Elementary uh, School, and um, Allie, I believe, works for Verb and mm -hmm. donated her time in, in that service. Um, uh, the Traeg uh, Smith Elementary School's uh, students uh, love to read, and those who uh, met monthly with Reading Goal could celebrate by choosing a special reading spot and the school to spend time reading their students' names were also drawn to win water bottles. Smith Elementary students uh, get together once a month to mash up, the, uh, to mash up their classes by uh, switching students um, in grades uh, K through five. This past month, they've been learning about community as well as the importance of each community member. Reed Elementary students uh, took on the 100 Random Acts of Kindness as a month challenge. Uh, for each challenge completed, a class received a kindness award uh, that could be uh, displayed in their class on their classroom door. Some of the acts of kindness include making uh, new friends at recess, uh, setting the table uh, at home for dinner, and writing thank you notes to the custodian at Reed. The Wisconsin Herd, um, Eddie Harris, provided 8th grade Webster Stanley student uh, basketball players uh, with a great message about determination, hard work, and priorities. Congratulations uh, to the educators listed um, uh, in, this, um, in this photo for their um, most influential educator in their lives of their seniors on the girls gas basketball team at Oshkosh. North and, um, and Oshkosh West High Schools. They were publicly recognized before the girls Oshkosh uh, North uh, versus Oshkosh West basketball game. That's a wonderful tradition uh, to recognize educators. South Park uh, Middle uh, School students trivia team placed sixth in the Oshkosh Area School District Foundation's annual tri trivia contest and tied for the best uh, costume contest. They dressed as celebrity Wheel of Fortune, Fortune hosts and guests. Uh, congratulations to South Park Middle School Renetta Heiler, for, whose poem entitled You See Animals has been entered into the Apple, Apple published uh, National Spelling uh, Student Poetry Contest, um, which will be held um, in 2000, uh, as a 2017 Rising Stars connection, Collection. Ad, uh, field was narrowed to the top 10 in each grade division. Winners have a chance to win anywhere from $25 to, to $1,500. Uh, good luck uh, to uh, Renata. South Park Middle School students celebrated their accomplishments and the Panther Way for their first semester uh, with Greek Week. Students participated in an opening ceremony, uh, played games um, during their lunch hour where they could uh, earn gold, silver, and bronze medals, as well as points for their teams. Uh, the team with the most <coughs> points at the end of the week was awarded uh, the Greek Week plaque. Tipler and Alp students celebrated positive behaviors with the Wisconsin Herd basketball game. Uh, the uh, day included uh, sideline fun consisting of VIP seats, uh, high five tunnel and, and bench warmers. Eight students from the school were recognized at center court uh, for their outstanding citizenship. Uh, students had a great, t uh, great time. Congratulations uh, to the Tipler and Alps uh, students who recently received awards for outstanding achievement in academics and citizenship during the second quarter awards assembly on January 24th. Congratulations also to eighth grade students uh, here uh, at Oshkosh West, um, uh, um, eight students at the Oshkosh West um, Academy 
for their global studies who were recently enrolled in what has been an awarded travel scholarships, which was noted earlier, had been noted earlier. Some of the students will be able to focus on Spanish immersion learning while uh, others will uh, study children's rights. Jefferson Elementary students recognize their uh, crossing guards during the crossing guard recognition week um, in January by providing them with uh, hot cocoa, cupcakes, and um, cards. They also held a special luncheon where the safety patrol students gave a speech on the importance of, um, of crossing guards. As a part of the social studies unit on geography and maps, Jefferson Elementary uh, School's first grade students used their compass and cardinal direction skills uh, and math counting skills as well as newly made uh, pirate hats to follow a, a treasure map around the school in an effort to locate a hidden treasure chest. Uh, students received uh, goodie bags and enjoyed the fun experience. Oshkosh North's Leadership II uh, class delivered TED Talks on a variety of to topics they included, they, they worked on uh, with in the English class to fine tune their talks and then were filmed. These skills will be helpful as students become leaders of tomorrow. Elementary school students experience learning without limits uh, through the use of um, the Google Classroom where assignments were sent uh, to students online. They can collaborate with each other and uh, to complete the work. Uh, we video is used to, as, as an electronic book review and students uh, recording the a student's voice recording on the book to share it with classmates. Students are also learning uh, using <coughs> code.org with all teachers' um, uh, computational thinking, uh, some using th critical thinking skills and collaborative and creative in a creative way. Congratulations uh, to these two students, uh, Wes Seniors, Natalie and Tyler um, uh, Taylor, who uh, who signed letters of intent to play in the women's soccer team at UW uh, uh, Green Bay. Congratulations also to Carly Coons, who was uh, named the Merit National Finalist. Also, sorry, repeat from <laughs> the rest. And um, uh, students at um, Oaklawn Elementary were recently visited by volunteers from Fit Oshkosh who read to them uh, from books uh, featuring African American artists and worked <laughs> on a craft inspired by the book that was read. Uh, Oaklawn third grade students worked hard on uh, to earn hoops that they could be used towards the goal of camping day in the classroom. Uh, students uh, brought blankets, made forts where they uh, could do their work during the school day. And pictured here are um, uh, our Oaklawn Adair um, uh, students, Oaklawn Elementary Schools in fifth grade recently completed uh, and graduated from the DARE program, which provides them with information and tools to deal with bullying, internet safety, drug violence, and other high risk circumstances. The communities at Oshkosh North High School's third annual spaghetti dinner was noted earlier is coming up on February 22nd and is being used as a fundraiser and a reminder that a uh, um, $10 ticket will get you a wonderful spaghetti dinner and you'll support a worthy cause. First grade students at Shapiro STEM Academy held uh, an author celebration where they uh, were able to reverse and edit uh, their information books and uh, share them with a captive audience. Fourth grade students learned how difficult life would be without the use of thumbs and made, and, and made robot fingers, which include paper, bones, and string tendons. Second grade students were busy creating dreamland maps uh, for Merlin the magician and uh, using these ima the imagination and creativity uh, to incorporate geography. We're really go going interesting ways at, um, mm -hmm. at uh, STEM Academy. And through the financial support of SOAR grant, uh, Jefferson PTO, Jefferson Elementary School hosted uh, opera for the young, uh, Rizalka, um, A Mermaid's Tale for the theme. Uh, students in grades uh, three and four performed uh, The Creatures of the Reef and the story uh, helped uh, students learn about and understanding acceptance of differences. And thank you to the Elks Club of Oshkosh for donating their time and purchasing new books for the library at Roosevelt Elementary School 
here. We're so very appreciated. And last, you'll find a list of activities and events attended by the superintendent in the last uh, three-week period. With that, I uh, completes the superintendent's report for this evening, February 14th. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay, do we have other reports by committee chairs? Yep. Uh, the Education Committee met on Thursday, February 1st at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, we began the meeting with an update on our Partners at Learning program, which is a program with the Oshkosh Area School District and so that is supported by the Oshkosh Chamber of Com Commerce. Um, we received an updated document listing the PAL schools out of, as of 131. There are currently two openings for PALs, one at Carl Traeger and one at E. Cook. We also were provided a more detailed document that listed the activities that take place as a result of the partnerships. Uh, a suggestion was made to reach out to a broader range of organizations. Um, the committee brainstormed some companies that are not on the list and might be considered potential PALs. We also discussed having a roundtable brainstorming session at some point to share what is happening across PALs at various schools. Uh, <clears throat> Julie Conrad joined us and also discuss the enrollment process for charters and programs in the district. Um, specifically, she wanted to let us know the difference between charter school schools versus programs. And a charter school has an agreement that is board approved and specific required criteria must be met for a student to enroll, including academic proficiency. Therefore, students could be refused admission at a charter school, but the remainder of the programs in the district, such as communities and the Global Academy, do not have requi required criteria for enrollment. Instead, there are a set number of seats available and students apply by certain deadline to be part of the program. If there are a large number of students who apply, names are placed into a lottery and students are chosen from that lottery. A waiting list is created from there. Students go through the application proce process to determine if it is a right fit and it not as a way to exclude students. Um, we did discuss um, some of the requirements for the Global Academy program, and Julie's going to be looking into some things there and reporting back to the committee. We also set some future agenda meeting items. It was requested that we review our K-12 vision for literacy, specifically how we address dyslexia and how we might adjust literacy programs for students that do not fit the traditional reading program. We also uh, asked for a science field test update from Julie Conrad and a literacy survey information update from Kim Brown. And we adjourned at 9.17 a.m. Our next meeting is March 3rd, 1st at 8.30 in the morning. Thank you. Thank you. Any other chairs? No? Okay, great. Then we'll move right into our workshops. Number one, high school graduation preparation. Good evening, we're excited to be able to share with you a little update about graduation. Um, very first thing is just to know how graduation has happened in the past, and I think most of you know because you've been there. Mm -hmm. um, graduation has been held at the North Field House for the last few years, and um, Culp Center has been used for Oshkosh West. But there have been some changes, which could be opportunities. So um, the first thing we learned is that Culp was no longer able to hold us during that have that weekend open to us and so we looked at that as okay so what could it be opportunity next um, and so we met with Mike Clough who is the director of operations at Menominee Arena and uh, he shared with us that that was definitely a possibility with us and has been very generous partner um, and so we are going to have graduation there. Um, the other reason that um, we held that was Oshkosh North. I don't know how much you want to say, but um, there was a change in bleachers. And yeah, so at North, we've had it there since the, the entirety of Oshkosh North. Um, so it was a huge tradition. It was a big consideration for us whether or not we leave it there um, because it is something that we have taken so much pride in having in the building. With that, when we had new bleachers put in, we lost about 350 seats. Um, and then when we moved to graduation to a weekend, we had 
a major enrollment mm -hmm. increase in attendance and with those two things we just didn't have the room um, last year we had to live stream it in the auditorium and that was filled and um, there are some different fire safety concerns with just crowding of entrances and exits so um, just for overall being able to house everyone that we want and not have to worry about do we start going down the ticket route and only in limit how many family members students can bring um, that's what kind of for forced our hand at Oshkosh North to stop a long-term tradition and start a new one. Mm -hmm. And so you can see some of the great highlights here. There is a 5,000 person capacity at the Menominee Arena, including the floor space. But what many people are going to be excited about is it's air conditioned. <laughs> um, That's nice. It has a great yes. sound system. There is going to be a jumbotron. So people, no matter where you're sitting, you will be able to see uh, the students crossing the stage, um, which is yes. exciting. Mm -hmm. um, 580 parking stalls. We realize that there is going to be some parking on streets, but we're recommending that um, our our families are dropping off their students so that we don't have every student driving as well. Mm -hmm. um, and not only all of that, but um, the Menominee Arena was very generous in um, what they're charging us. They are looking at us as a partner, and so it's actually costing us less than it did for Oshkosh West to hold mm -hmm. it at Colf Center in the past. So um, it's been pretty great. Awesome. I, I should note before we leave graduation and as we um, approach the end of six years of my experience here um, on my first interview um, by, by uh, the school board back in um, May of, um, of 2012 um, I was told uh, what I needed to do was find a way to avoid having um, overheated graduations at call <laughs> it took six years to accomplish that but um, uh, but uh, this was an opportunity that um, uh, before this building was built I talked to the leadership of uh, building it and saying could we consider graduation I know you're going to have an arena that is air-conditioned could we get in on the ground floor of potentially mm -hmm. hosting it there and so the first time we have guaranteed appropriate seating but we also have air conditioning no matter what the temperatures are mm -hmm. outside and the beautiful thing about holding it on a Sunday is not only are, do we not have to worry about our students who uh, possibly are in sports on that Thursday, Friday, or Saturday, but it also happens to be a day that's not going to be as busy for the Menominee Arena, so um, that that is a great thing for all of us. So graduation will be on Sunday, June 3rd. Oshkosh West will be at noon this year, and Oshkosh North will be at 3.30. We spread that out so that there would be enough time for people to take pictures and parking lots to mm -hmm. empty before the other ones began. And then next year, it'll flip-flop, <coughs> which you'll see in the calendar with Oshkosh North at noon and Oshkosh West at 3.30. One quick question. Is there going to be any <coughs> auxiliary police helping out with the transition of parking in the area? <coughs> much similar to what there is now during the, the basketball games. Mm -hmm. We've we always at, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. we've Go always ahead. at West worked with aux auxiliary mm -hmm. police yeah. and of course the university police, which we wouldn't have in this situation. Um, so we invite them in to our graduation meetings that we're, we have scheduled now for this spring. Um, so they will be part of that conversation and then it's up to them to kind of determine what resources they feel they need to put into the, um, okay. the ceremonies. We're going to have uh, the names up in the marquee flashing off for... I don't know. We have not talked about that. That would be a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, what, I think what's especially going to help North is that it's green seats. So that's... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there was some strategy there. Yeah. We weren't going to ruin tradition sense. and go to some other color. Yeah, we, go Packers. We, go Packers. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, blue and yellow make green. green. Mm -hmm. oh. My concern would be with parking. Um, those of us who attended the turkey trot, um, which was, we weren't in the, the actual arena, but it was held or started on those grounds. There were people parked all the way on 11th Street and some of the other numbered streets mm -hmm. to Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, there was an event at the arena, I think it was January 1st, people were parked beyond oh, Jefferson School. Mm -hmm. So uh, encouragement of carpooling or people walking or bringing bicycles, I don't know mm -hmm. if there are bicycle racks there or not, but, but parking I think is going to be a significant issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've already been communicating with our families about that and again encouraging 
instead of the students driving their cars and then the families uh -huh. driving their cars come together we're actually asking the students to report a lot closer to the start time than mm -hmm. we used to we used to have them arriving a lot earlier so we're really trying to communicate out to their seniors mm -hmm. and their families come with your family have your family drop you off and then go park um, and you know for families that have guests coming to mm -hmm. carpool as much as possible so mm -hmm. and uh, at both uh, both at Colf and as well as North um, we had significant parking overflow that occurred yes. in, uh, from parking lots as well into the neighborhood. So, and uh, for those of us who needed to rush between the two graduations, we always were protected by um, uh, a little reserved um, parking. But uh, in this case, um, uh, those of us involved directly in the graduation um, just can hang out there between the two graduations mm -hmm. and plan on being there from uh, from well before noon until um, after five o'clock. Exciting. Parking is always a, a, an issue at the university uh, for those of us who work there um, on a daily basis. However, there are m numerous lots uh, to choose from, plus there's a um, parking ramp, and then there's a shuttle service from uh, people who remember the old Cub Foods on the mm -hmm. other side of the river with a shuttle service. So I'm just concerned about parking I'll just leave it at that but it sounds like you're addressing that and hopefully everything will be fine I think the venue is terrific thank Could you you guys have a shuttle service as you were saying yeah. we well, talked we about that can, you know do we look we at explore if yeah. we can um, identify <coughs> a means of dealing with that um, we could uh, certainly work on trying to get a shuttle mm -hmm. service from a remote lot we just have to get a mission from a uh, lot um, I, I think it would not be wise to have as far away as um, as North High School's parking lot, but potentially parking, uh, at, parking at, yeah. um, at West or downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the right, lake right at the, the ramp downtown. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the Lake Air mm -hmm. or even um, the Convention Center. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. We have we have talked about that yep. a little bit. It's just so hard to know if it's going to be an issue or not. And right. Mm -hmm. Anytime you do something for the first time, you mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. figure out what went well, what didn't go well, what were the challenges. So. And our principals have had um, our, um, our our band's orchestra um, uh, present at the school at the site um, at the mm -hmm. Arena. Uh, we've explored that, and the sound is fantastic. Uh, for those of you who have attended mm -hmm. any performance or any yep. activity there. Mm -hmm. um, Hearing will not be an issue. Yeah. <laughs> the other great thing um, about the arena compared to um, Colf is, if you've been to an, a graduation at Colf, the the audience seems so far so away from yeah. the mm -hmm. stage yeah. and so far yeah. removed, and the people way at the back yeah. could hardly hear a band and our right. choir. And so, um, if this is a little bit more up close and personal, and the jumbotron makes that even more so. So we're really excited about it mm -hmm. being a little bit more of a we feel like we're all in this together. <laughs> so. It's going to be yeah, great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It really makes them feel like they're really the stars of the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, because the family is right yeah. there on top. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's very cool. It's, it's a cool, cool arena to do yeah. anything in. And having uh, experienced um, three graduations in one day with a, in three high school district um, in, uh, in a basketball arena, it is, it is very, um, uh, back in Minnesota, it is a very uh, workable situation. And having the space we have between the two graduations um, creates enough for clearing out and creates um, a wonderful atmosphere there. And we are very grateful to the folks at uh, mm -hmm. Miami Arena because yeah. we are ending up with um, a wonderful bargain. Mm -hmm. They're not charging anything of the standard rate. And um, two graduations for the less, less than the cost of one in the past. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's uh, fabulous. That's a perfect segue, Mr. Mack. I want to commend uh, you for jumping on that opportunity mm -hmm. right away and our staff for, I mean, I mean, sort of a moment in Oshkosh history, right? I'm not especially a basketball fan, but it's a very hopeful moment. And to, to seize that and be right in that is absolutely the right thing mm -hmm. to do. So thank, thank you. you. Thank for that. One, of, one of the things you noted in the, um, uh, in the Good News Report, um, uh, the partnership, one of the things I, I once um, Oshkosh was selected uh, as the home of what is now named the herd, was not named at that time. Um, I had discussions with the uh, folks from uh, <coughs> uh, the Milwaukee Bucks about the lack of involvement in the community. I was used to having much more engagement with students and uh, partnership, and they really are fulfilling my request to become engaged with us, and that if they want to develop a fan base and they want to mm -hmm. celebrate in a healthy activity at basketball, mm -hmm. um, engage and be a party to our community, and um, they are fulfilling everything I ask of them as to being partners with us. If it comes to the community, to is simply ignore and <coughs> not engage 
um, our elementary and middle and high school students is simply a waste and um, uh, they have truly uh, reached out to us and we really appreciate uh, their partnership in many ways. Yep, and, and speaking of that, coming soon to elementary schools near us, the herd is working with us on a reading program. Oh, yes. So coming coming soon, more information. Okay. So um, it's, a, it's a great addition to the community and another wonderful reason that um, uh, 2017 has become a, a wonderful year for Oshkosh in, in having um, both uh, uh, the efforts of the herd, the new arena, and certainly um, mm -hmm. Oshkosh Corporation. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you by month for you. So if you have questions in any particular month, feel free to stop us and, and chat. Um, so um, school is going to begin. We have August 22nd. Um, that's new professional training day. So that's when our new teachers join us. Um, we do a new teacher academy. Um, special ed has an academy um, to help all of our special ed teachers. Then of course, there's the whole payroll um, business office piece. So, and it's about, about three days for our new teachers joining us, but it's a good celebration. And um, all of our administrators have come every year to clap in all of our new employees. So it's a great way to welcome all of our, our new people. Um, then you can see on August 27th, we have August um, convocation. And then we have professional development and staff meetings throughout that whole week. Also, as a reminder in here that um, by state law, we have to start either on September 1st or after Labor Day. And September 1st happens to be on the weekend. So we are starting after Labor Day. OK. And then you can see where our early release days are. Our first one is on September 19th. In October, we have early release on October 10th. Um, October, and this is where there was a change. If you saw the calendar went out again today, I didn't realize until we met with the OEA last night that we had two middle school fall PT conferences. One of those were supposed to be high school. So um, October 18th is the middle school fall parent teacher conference, and then October 22nd is the high school fall parent teacher conference. And we do that purposely so parents who have mm -hmm. um, students who are in elementary, middle, and high school are not feeling like they have to get everywhere in one single night. And then traditionally, October 26th has been off, and that allows our art music and FIA teachers. There's some national conferences that are going on that they, um, or state conferences that they participate in. Mm -hmm. Um, in addition to that, a few years ago, we did not have a three-day weekend in October, and we learned very quickly from our students and our staff <laughs> that having that break at that time um, comes is is a great refresher at that at that point <laughs> in the fall. Okay, so you can see in November we have our end of first quarter early release is on November fourteenth. November 16th, no school for students, um, and for elementary, middle, and high school, we do have conferences in the AM. And then, of course, Thanksgiving break. In December, we have an early release day, and then, of course, our winter break. January, no school on January 1st, New Year's. Um, early release on January 9th. You can see where end of semester is. And then January 21st is um, the day that we were telling you about where we are meeting or working with CESA 6 and the first organization. Um, to bring in national speakers. And so um, they will be here in Oshkosh, um, will be one of the hubs, and um, we will have professional development throughout that full day. February 13th, early released. Um, February 18th, no school. Um, so that will, uh, and then it'll be professional development day in the AM and the PM. And then of course, um, our juniors only at high school will be taking the ACT on August, on February 20th and 21st. Mm -hmm. Say anything more about that? Oh, that's the same as it's been for the past few years. Mm -hmm. 
Um, this is, uh, it, it ended up, this is where spring break was this past year, um, mm -hmm. but we are keeping it this last week for a few reasons. If we would have gone with the traditional time of where we've had spring break in the past, it actually interferes, it's right in the middle of testing. And so then we don't know if we would have been able to get all the testing in if a student was absent. The other beautiful piece of this is we also realize that we have a very diverse community. And so um, we think this is a, a good thing to maybe have spring break um, at a different time than the traditional um, Easter. <clears throat> April 10th, early release. And then we still have April 19th off as no school. And then May 8th is early release, May 27th, Memorial Day. And then we go into June. Um, you can see that next year's uh, graduation will be on June 2nd. And as we said, we are flipping North and West graduation. Um, and then you can see um, the snow makeup day number three, half day record keeping. You'll notice that we did not have snow makeup day one or two. And that is because um, as we worked with the calendar committee, it is, and we're asked by parents and our staff all the time, why do we go so late into June? And so we've been exploring different ways that we can condense the calendar and still meet the 180 student contact days as well as the instructional minutes. And as we started to work with other school districts, we found that they are able to absorb their snow days. They didn't have built in snow days or actual days in the calendar. Where they absorb that in is within their instructional minutes. And so we started to take a look at that for the Oshkosh area school district. So I'll show you in just a second the instructional minutes that we can absorb. So if we have an inclement weather day, we can absorb those instructional minutes because we're over the, the state requirement. So by doing that, we have condensed down the calendar by two school days. However, if we go to a third inclement weather day or a third snow day, then we are going to have to go to school June 10th. If we perhaps had a fourth day, it hasn't happened in a while, um, but we would we would just tack on days at the end of the school year. And and other districts in the state or in our region would also be in the same um, in the same shape if if that would happen with inclement weather days. The other thing is, as we worked with this calendar, we had a great group of individuals from um, our NTA group, our OEA group, um, administrators worked with us and we met five times, mm -hmm. four to five times, and, and really talking about what are ways that we can organize the calendar. Um, a lot of their suggestions are represented here. And also another suggestion that they made, and we got feedback from parents, is that we've changed, we've changed back to the other format on the calendar mm -hmm. um, in order to make it easier to read. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about those instructional minutes. Mm -hmm. So on this chart up here, you can see by level, there is the first column that says total, second column, total hours required. This is the number of hours required by the Department of Public Instruction that we held for instruction. So there's so many student contact days that we need to have and we need to have so many instructional hours or instructional minutes. This is the required in the second column as you move to right. This is at the top there, the total Oshkosh Area School District hours. So for elementary, we are this school year with the added minutes, and if you know from last school year, we added 15 minutes on to the elementary school day. We are at 1,091 hours. At middle school, we're at 1,249 hours. And you may be going, how come middle school has so many hours? Okay, there's two different reasons here, because I knew this was going to be a question, is that at middle school, middle school starts at 819 and is dismissed at 337. So compared to the high school, even though that the same total hours required, compared to the high school, there is 11 additional minutes per day times 180 days. That adds up to a lot of hours. In addition to that, elementary and middle schools can count recess time as some of your instructional minutes because they because it's it's just built in there that mm -hmm. students need time or activity and middle school has their recess time up against as in part of their lunch. Mm -hmm. And so there's some minutes that are also counted within the middle school day um, as instructional minutes. So that's why the the plethora of hours compared to the other levels. With um, high school this year, we're at 1,400, uh, 1,142 hours, which is less than one day, and thus the reason we had to make up the the bomb threat time mm -hmm. at Oshkosh West High School because really we're only able to absorb a four-hour delay at the high school level. 
So in order to be able to incorporate those two snow days, elementary can absorb those, middle school can absolutely absorb them, the high school cannot. And so to be able to do this calendar, what, we're, um, what we have built in here is the high school would add three additional minutes per day. And we're not exactly sure where that's going to be. More than likely, it's going to have to be on the end of the day in order to have the busing runs, be having enough gap in time um, for the bus to do the elementary students and then to do the secondary students. But by adding three additional minutes per day, we, um, we go to 1,150 hours, which gives us exactly two days. So with a little, well, actually, there's like 20-minute little <laughs> cushion there. But um, essentially, we get, the, we get the two days. We get the two days out of that. Um, we felt like three minutes was doable. And, uh, and absorbable. Um, going beyond that, um, if we wanted to absorb more instructional time, we could do that. But looking at currently the structure of the high school day, it doesn't really seem um, feasible. So this is where we're going to start. A note that we are going to do a survey next year to our families and to our staff to see what if how spring break is going at that mid-year time. So that is something that we're going to do next year. But we felt like it was important for people to try it out in order to know what that, well, that and it didn't, it truly did not work in the calendar for this year, but we wanted to see um, what people's reactions were. Good. So. So questions. And just for a reminder, uh, the snow has fallen on win uh, weekends and uh, mm -hmm. no ice and no fog. We have yet to consume a um, uh, school closing day Correct. Um, thus Correct. far. So um, mm -hmm. when it snows on the weekend, um, the city of Oshkosh um, uh, is shaken because it's overtime and driving mm -hmm. um, snow plows. But I celebrate the fact that we do we have, have school. Time, so yes. mm -hmm. <laughs> we mm -hmm. have school. So. Another day that we were very purposeful on is Martin Luther King Day. Say. That's a professional development day um, so that students would be home to celebrate Martin Luther King, but we can still have professional development. So, mm -hmm. okay. Do we have any questions? I just have one quick comment. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to oh, yeah. say thank you that the, well, even though it was not intentional, but the fact that the uh, spring break falls on the same week as the UWO spring break mm -hmm. is um, making a lot of people happy. I, as you know, there was a contingency at UWO Absolutely. in the Faculty mm -hmm. Senate led by Carl Lowenstein yep. trying to get these dates to uh, match up for mm -hmm. years now. So yes. this makes a lot of people very happy, mm -hmm. including myself, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exciting. Thank you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, request for future agenda items. Anyone? Excuse me, we, um, we need to s schedule our annual board self-evaluation and forms were distributed to each of you um, at the end of, actually we probably should have given them to these ladies too. Um, they were uh, distributed at the end of January. I think we asked for a uh, due date of February 7th, which would give plenty of time for the data to be tabulated and knowing that the board was going to have extra meetings in the month of of uh, February that that would get those those taken care of so if you haven't turned those in please do so if somehow they took on legs and they've disappeared let me know I have some extra ones mm -hmm. thank you <coughs> any other requests for future agenda items <coughs> was that I thought that was approved or that the date was suggested to us about the questionnaire just oh, the qu it was electronic I thought correct? we had a date too yes okay uh, mr. Peschel but I didn't see it on the calendar I thought it was March. It was March. Yeah. Um, well, we'll nail that down. Well, we'll figure we don't it out. Okay. Do that right now. Okay. Oh, that's Thanks. 13th. Yeah, March 13th. March 13th. Oh, it's a special date then. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're good there. Thank you. Anything else? Announcements. All right. Then we get to adjourn to executive session for the purposes of considering the employment promotion compensation or performance evaluation data of any public, public employee over which the governmental body has jurisdiction or exercises responsibility 19.851C Wisconsin Statutes A, consider a pending personnel matter 
And number two, considering the disciplinary data of specific persons 19.851F Wisconsin statutes, A, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others and engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules 120.13. One CE Wisconsin statutes. B, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct constituting repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules. 120.131 CE Wisconsin statutes. C, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others, engaged in conduct which endangered the property, health, or safety of any employee, a <coughs> school board member of the school district in which the pupil is enrolled, and engaged in conduct while, which constitutes repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules, 120.13 CE Wisconsin statutes, and D, review expulsion recommendation from expulsion hearing officer for a high school student who engaged in conduct while at school or while under the supervision of a school authority which endangered the property, health, or safety of others, engaged in conduct which endangered the property, health, or safety of any employee, a school board member of the school district in which the employee is enrolled, and engaged in conduct which constitutes repeated refusal or neglect to obey the rules 120.13 CE Wisconsin statutes. So moved. Second. Okay. Please call the roll. Carlin? Aye. Carlin? Aye. Eliza? Aye. Eliza? Aye. Evans? Aye. Evans? Aye. Garner? Aye. Garner? Aye. Herzog? Aye. Herzog? Aye. Olmstead? Aye. Olmstead? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Motion carry. Okay. I think we're going to the ISD room. Right. Yes, okay. So we're going to...